Welcome to the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust at Slimbridge. It's one of my favourite places to come at any time of the year. It's a brilliant place for the photographer and the naturalist alike. It's got fantastic wild birds coming in, which is brilliant for practising your action and stuff like that. But it's also got a brilliant captive collection. It's got one of the largest captive collections in the world of wildfowl. So you can practise your reflections, your portraits and all of those techniques. It's a fantastic day out. It's a brilliant conservation organisation. And over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to tell you all about it and show you my favourite spot. So come with me and come in. Now I'll probably say this a few times during the video, but one of the things I really love about Slimbridge is that it's accessible for all. Um, you can see here on the entrance, you have this really amazing walkway. There are lifts as well. Um, and most of the grounds here are extremely flat um, and, and good for wheelchairs. And good for, if you're a family, good for push chairs as well. But the accessibility here and to, make nature accessible to all is one of the core things about Slimbridge and it's something I really really love. Now once you get into Slimbridge the first place that you see is going to be the Swan Lake here so named because it's home to tons of mute swans. Uh, lots of action on here, lots of things going on, there's some um, tufted ducks as well, all kinds of stuff. I've seen some fantastic courtship here in the early spring so it's a great place to see the heart-shaped courtship. Also in the summer you can see some really really uh, nice signets on here. Um, one of the things I do like is the backlit nature of this. You can see if I just turn this round you can see it's pretty backlit now, okay? Now that's a good thing because it means you can line up with the swans um, with the, the, the bocce of the sun on the water and get some really atmospheric pictures. Put it on shade white balance, get some really, really nice stuff of any of the ducks going through. It looks really fantastic at any time of the day. But if you come in the afternoon, it's mainly backlit. I normally spend about half an hour here. You can get some really cool pictures and it's a really good start to Slimbridge. Now you can't get very low around Swan Lake, but there is an area here, the, the bird feeding area, just on the edge you can see, where you can go in and get flat. Now, because this is the winter, they're not allowing access close to the birds, bird flu, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, but when you come here, maybe in the spring and the summer, you can get nice and low and flat here, and you get some good angles. Certainly with the, with the, with the sun shooting that way, you can look into some really beautiful reflections of the building. And you think, oh, it's the building. It doesn't look very good. Trust me, the reflections can look really, really funky and cool using the building there. Um, and it's just good for getting low angle. And of course, you can also shoot into the sun and get some backlit portraits as you know I'm obsessed by backlight and that's what I like. So Swan Lake already I've shown you a couple of cool spots let's go and have a look somewhere else. Now I said Slimbridge is really good for all seasons and it is. Uh, in the summer uh, you get all the flamingos on the pools like this it's amazing to see them just here don't have to like crawl in muck like I normally have to they're right here it's really brilliant. In the winter they're all locked away but you can get some good sneaky pictures as I'll show you in a while. Now earlier on I said about this is great for flamingos and of course because it's the winter they're all inside but you can still photograph them because the light is coming through the windows from the opposite side and you can isolate individuals and get some really cool backlit shots. So try and find an area that's not covered with humidity and steam, get your camera flat against the glass and then just look and you'll see there can be some amazing pictures in there because I'm just looking in there. There's some really, really beautiful light on some of these flamingos. And I find that if you stand here long enough, they, they come and have a look at you. They kind of get interested. It's brilliant. I can see quite a few really abstract pictures. You're not, you know, you're not going to get the, the archetypal picture of a flamingo standing on one leg. But what you might get are some really, really beautiful abstracts of the feathers and the head and some really cool shapes. So it's worth looking at all of these flamingo houses here uh, in the winter because you can get some cool shots. I think the thing that I love about Slimbridge the most um, is the fact that it's an all season place to come. You know, you come in the winter like I'm now. For me, you know, I love to photograph the Buicks coming in um, and the geese and stuff like that, and that's great. But also in the spring, the place is full of chicks and young birds. And in the summer, they open a canoe safari. It's really inclusive, as I say. It's great for families. It's just an all year destination to come and I never fail to get some good pictures here. I don't come here if it's really pouring rain. I pick the weather. It's a really beautiful day today. It's actually the busiest day of the year today. It's the January the 2nd. It's the first sunny day in what seems like weeks of rain and the place is absolutely packed. Um, but the birds don't really care. The birds are separated. They're all happy. It's just fantastic. I just love being here. Right, let's go and have a look at the Ida area over here. Now, a really fun place to come when you're here is this kind of Ida Lake. It's on the side of the main Swan Lake and it's really good because it's got a willow with it's got some really beautiful colour. Um, it's very good for golden eye, it's very good for swans, all kinds of stuff comes on here. It's 
okay in the winter. You have to be just careful at the sun angles because the sun is generally in the wrong direction unless all the wildfowl are at the far end. There's a slightly better place to go that's a bit of an in knowledge. It's called the, the Ida Corner and it's just up here. So come and have a look. Well, here I am at one of the hidden gems of Slimber, just off the main track here, it's called Ida. Um, and you used to be able to go along this trackway that you see here can't anymore but the idas don't care they're all sitting on it um, completely asleep I, I really like this area because there's a section of willow at the bottom which catches the late light it's really really beautiful you get some lovely colors on the water which means you get some really great reflections of the birds there are so many species just wandering around here doing their stuff I just absolutely love it it's a fantastic place to come and practice your photography I mean it's just brilliant and there's a whole load of people say oh it's not wild it's not wild it doesn't matter you're supporting the wildfowl and wetland trust's fantastic work that they do for conservation by coming here you can practice your photography there's plenty of wild stuff to do as well um, but this kind of stuff it's really really awesome to do and I can spend hours here in fact I've spent about an hour so far here. I can just spend hours getting the birds and the reflections and just watching them it's so such a peaceful thing to do so come and find this place it's called Ida it's on the map have a look at it it's brilliant now as I said earlier on Slimbridge has some fantastic areas for wildfowl and it has a network of hides all around the outside and this is one of them the South Lakes Discovery Hide it faces out onto a really really big lake and it's really great for tufted ducks uh, in on the left hand side there you'll see there's loads of tufted ducks come and sit and rest and chill so it's good for reflections there's a big finger of land goes out in the middle that can be good for gulls further around um, you can see snipe sometimes bitten that's generally with binoculars or telescopes so for us photographers I would say the peak thing to do here are the tufted ducks which are really really beautiful in the especially in the low winter light like now you never know what's going to turn up here and the best thing is the windows are openable so come and have a look I won't be able to say much inside there but I'll show you around come on Now this is one of my favorite areas to photograph. It's in the corner of North America and it's really good for reflections, particularly if you come here in October when the trees are red and gold and the water is just amazing with the birds swimming on it. So as I said, an all year destination. Um, it's okay now, good for reflections, but it's as peak in the autumn. Come and have a look. Of course, predictably, when I come here, there's no birds on the water. That's the way it goes. There you go. So you can see the trees here that actually look very unimpressive right now, but trust me, in the autumn, they're just full of golden and red leaves. And so the water is just magical at the end of the day. So October is a really, really great time to come. Lots of birds milling around. You can see today <laughs> it's completely devoid of anything. They're all over the back there. Um, but as the day comes on, they'll come in. And the good thing about Slimbridge as well, if you don't know what the bird species are, then all you have to do is to look as always they have really really good communication and really good signage but anyway i've got one lone bird <laughs> Now, in recent years, Slimbridge have put in a lot of money into developing the site. Uh, and the most amazing thing here is the new aviary. You can't go in it now because it's because of bird flu. Obviously, they're trying to minimize contact with the birds, but it's incredible. You can go in and get low angle. You can see avocets, uh, all kinds of waders in there. Really educational, it's lovely. You know, and if you can't get to the Norfolk or wherever on the coast to do all your wild waders and stuff, this is the next best thing. It's really good. It's really good for practicing and honing your skills and it's fantastic. And I wish I could take you in there, but it's definitely worth a stop, the Avery. Um, and the good thing is it's right next to the Flamingos as well. So you can come over here at the end of the day, plan your route around uh, and get some nice uh, end of the day Flamingo shots. Now I'll show you the Flamingo place, even though it's the winter and they're all locked away.
Now, I know what you're going to say, um, it's empty, there's no flamingos here, the Flamingo Lagoon. Well, that's because it's the winter and they're all stuck away for the winter. But in the spring and the summer here, this is a fantastic place to be at the end of the day because you have flamingos literally here. You can shoot through, do some amazing abstracts, the beaks, the legs, do some slow motion, all kind of stuff. The sun sets behind, so in the morning the sun's on them, so you want to get here in the morning for the sun to be on them, but in the evening the sun sets behind them, so it's very, very, it's kind of over there, so it's very, very backlit, but it's a brilliant place to come uh, to get tons of action when they're out and look on the website they'll tell you when they're going to be out and about it's amazing to see them here I just love it and it's one of the highlights for me of coming in the spring now Slimbridge has always been at the forefront of conservation it's the only UK charity to promote the conservation of wetland birds and their habitats and one of the biggest success stories they've had in recent years has been the common crane you see they were here and they've just wandered off over there now has been the breeding and reintroduction of the common crane in this area um, there are several out on the salt marsh still last year I got lucky enough to see them fly overhead I haven't got any pictures yet um, and down obviously on the levels but if you aren't lucky enough to see them on the salt marshes, then you can come here to the collection when these two will entertain you for ages. They're really relaxing to watch, really fantastic. And just remember that all the money you spend at Slimbridge goes towards their great conservation. So it's a brilliant thing to eat in the restaurant and spend in the gift shop. And no, I'm not paid by them. I'm just a very enthusiastic annual member. Now, I'll spend my day here, um, as you've seen, in the hot spots, enjoying myself and getting some cool stuff. But at the end of the day, my attention turns to Martin Smith, Robbie Garnet, and Rushy. They're the names of the hides that are on the far side here. Actually, the, the hides closest to the, the visitor center. And that's where the biggest numbers of wild birds congregate at the end of the day. It can be a really good wildlife spectacle because during the winter months, the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust actually do a feed up four o'clock for all of the birds on the lake get lots of wild ones coming in it's brilliant for action it's a brilliant spectacle uh, and i'm going to head there now so why don't you come with me and see what to do now if you don't fancy sitting in one of the hides and you want to sit in a bit of comfort and warmth the peng observatory here is really really cool thank you very much sir as you can see lots of seats very very nice view of the lake there obviously you've got glass so as a photographer it's it's difficult to, to shoot through it's a brilliant way to observe the feed later on um, and on those cold winter days i know why people sit in here i get it um, but i prefer the hides that are up here so come with me and let's explore a bit okay so here's the first of the hides this is the martin smith hide and it's really really good for lap wings you get huge flocks of lap wings that feed out on the marsh a little bit too far for individual pictures with even the biggest lens but they often get chucked into the air by a peregrine fox or just because a leaf blows in the wrong direction it's a spectacular sight when they're in the air and this is a really good hide to do it from i won't be able to say much when i'm in there but you can see that all the windows are opening look at this look right over me right over me now Look. Wow. Well, that was quite a productive time in the Martin Smith hide. Lots of lap wings taking off in front and further away, lots of mixed wader flocks as well going up. Really, really beautiful to see them turning and twisting. And also just in front, somewhere I learned there was a couple of very nice teal pairs. And these are wild ducks that are in here, okay? Very, very shy wild ducks, very close to the hide there. The light was wrong, they were kind of in the shade, but it's a good place for me to come back to and a little bit of a tip for you as well. Um, now, I'm gonna have a bit further look along. I think the Robbie Garnet hide is along this way a bit. So let's just go and have have a look at the front just for completeness so you can see what's there. So here we are down at the Robbie Garnet hide. Let's go and take a look inside. Well, that's the Robbie Garnet done, and uh, it's a really, really, really good hide, actually, um, because the lake is right in front, so you get lots of landing coming in onto the water. Um, lots of geese in there, um, and as well, if the lake is quite rough like it is today, you could blur it. So it's quite a good place for photography. These hides on this side have all got lift-up windows, so they're fantastic. Um, I'm gonna now go to the best one, which is unnamed. We call it the in-focus hide, because it's next to the in-focus uh, binocular shop. Um, but anyway, let's go down there and have a look because it's getting to that time of the day. 
Now my favourite small hide here is just at the end. It's actually very close to the Peng Observatory. It's really small and unmarked, no seats and anything, but it offers, I think, the best view onto the main uh, lake where the Buick swans are gonna come in. And the Buicks are something that I'm here for. I love my Buicks. They fly in from Russia. Um, uh, in November uh, to get away from the really really cold winter they have a thousands of kilometer journey to get here um, and we have about 100 here this year uh, most years it's fantastic to see them coming in it's a windy day today so I'm quite sure that they're going to be really really cool and lots of stuff is going to happen this hide it gets very busy so you need to get in especially if it's going to be a weekend very tough or if it's going to be a bright day like today so we'll have a look um, I won't be able to talk much when I'm in there but I'll do some filming and do some voiceovers for you so you can see but you can see just the location where it is there's the Peng Observatory just on the end and that's the Robbie Garnet hide and Martin Smith there thing I've come from so you can see it's just here just next to the in focus Just about to begin is the four o'clock swan feed, which is one of the best things that you can come and see in your whole life. It's so much fun, so much noise, so much just chaos. It's awesome. Four o'clock in the winter, celebration, brilliant. Well, what an incredible experience that always is in that hive when they do the the swan and the geese and everything else feed at four o'clock it's just brilliant um it's madness i mean to photograph it it's difficult but just to see it it's incredible i just love it, it brings a smile to my face it wasn't the best time in the hive this afternoon the wind wasn't right didn't get too many fly-ins but it's such a feel-good thing to come and do here i absolutely love it and now i'm gonna head out from my wonderful day at Slimbridge. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing why I love this place so much. It's just so incredible. Do come here, look at their excellent website. Details below of where the website is, links. Um, really good restaurant here. I didn't even mention the Sir Peter Scott house that you can go and have a tour around now. There's all kinds of things on in the summer as well. Pond dipping, maybe I'll do if you like this. I'll do a summer video on here as well so I can show the flamingos and some of the other stuff. But I hope I've given you an insight into how wonderful this place is and why I love it so much. Now, as always, uh, following this will be uh, some extra hints and tips and some extra content for the Wild Bunch. So look at some technical stuff, uh, but maybe there'll be a few favorite pictures as well. Who knows what I'll do in the edit, but I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, day out at Slimbridge and there'll be more to come. Come along, support the Wildfire and Wetland Trust. It's just great. See you later, bye. Well, I hope that you see what an amazing place Slimbridge is. Oh, I just love it there. Um, any information you want, the links are down below. Please visit Slimbridge and please join the Wildfowl and Wetland Trust. Uh, it saves you having to pay every time you go in. You can go to any one of the reserves they have in the UK and your money is going towards a really, really good cause. Remember, I'm not employed by them. I'm just a very, very passionate member. Now, I hope that you saw there some ideas about where to go. Maybe you're a bit confused about where it is, so here's a map. There you go, there's the map. Um, the, the link to it, again, is on the, web, uh, on the Slimbridge website, so take a look on there. Um, as you see, it's not actually that big. I mean, if you were to walk around the intricacies, it would take you about 45 minutes just to walk all around it. But what I've done is highlighted on these maps now some of the more interesting areas for you. So let's have a look at the first one. And there you can see the red circle is the active one. So this is Swan Lake. So that's where we started with the, the right at the very beginning, across the walkway, looking across at the swans. Very good for swans, very good for mute swans particularly. Uh, tufted ducks, all kinds of other stuff. Some nice funky reflections. Uh, it's also where the low angle place is and it's also where the entrance to Welly Bootland is. So that's a good place to begin. Um, and then you'll see South Lake Discovery Hide. So you remember I went in there for the tufted ducks 
uh, on the left hand side, all floating and asleep. Really, really beautiful footage. I just love it. Nice low angle, openable windows, which is great. Well done, WWT, for that. There's also a slip of land in the middle that has some goals. You never know what's going to show up. Things come in and out and they fly all around. So it's a good place to always check out and see what's going on. I put this red circle around this one area because that's where the Flamingo Lagoon is where when they let the flamingos out, which will probably be from spring, you get to see them backlit at the end of the day. It's really fantastic. It's also where the aviary is, where you've got the avocets and all the other waders. It's a brilliant place to go in. So that kind of area is kind of a hot spot as well. So do have a look. Then where have we got next? Oh, the Andean flamingos. Now that's where you can look through uh, when they're inside the house. You can look through, the light comes in from the other side and you can get some really interesting shapes and forms and abstracts and stuff like that. So you can see there's a nice little path there for you to go around. And then we hit, look here at North America. Now you remember the lake where I said it's brilliant and then I walked up and there's not a single bird on it. Well, that's North America. Really good for reflections, especially in October. Um, there's a couple of nice areas over the back as well, but the main pond where I showed you with the signs in front of it, that's where you just want to lurk towards the end of the day. The light will be off behind you. It will be magic on a winter's day, especially October, November, even a bit of September where the colors are out, it will be magic. So North America for you there. Um, then I've, uh, I've, I've put a ring around the three hides on the right hand side. So just as you come in on the northernmost part of the reserve, that's the uh, Stephen Kirk, the Robbie Garnett, Martin Smith um, and the in focus hide. Actually four I said there, I'm sure I said three, but anyway, they're the kind of wild hides if you like where all a lot of the wild species go. Um, obviously at the bottom there you've got the, the main flight in for the swans and the geese, the Buick swans, it's fantastic. And my beloved pintails, you never know what's gonna turn up on that lake, it's amazing. If you don't fancy sitting outside, if it's cold, if it's wet or whatever, you can go inside the Peng Observatory, uh, which is just, just on the same walkway, uh, which is obviously glass fronted. Those hides are always worth a look. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. You never know what you're gonna see there. Uh, lots of things coming to land, lots of birds fly across. It's really, really active. Uh, I love it. And also on the willow, the willow hide and the knot hide, which are on the other side of the walkway, have a look there in the morning because you can get some teal on there as well. And teal are my current fascination. I'm absolutely desperate to get an amazing picture of teal. So they're very good. Now some places I didn't talk about. On the far, there you are, I guess it's the, uh, northwest uh, of Slimbridge, you've got the Lathbury, the Bover Camp, and the Kingfisher Hide. Now, I don't go in those mainly because they're bird watching hides. And what I mean by that is there's plenty of species there, but generally it's a telescope or a big binocular job. When they have the snipe, um, when they have the snipe, when they have the bit in there, you can generally see it as well. The Kingfisher Hide is really cool because it has a picture of mine advertising the Kingfishers in it. Uh, there's a false nest hole there, so at the right time of year, the Kingfishers will come in and out. Um, it's a really cool place to be. I don't generally go to that part of the reserve, but lots of people do. So please have a look. There's also a playground over there for kids, which is really, really cool. Talking of kids, right? I know some of you have got families and stuff and you want to bring them. I, I, you know, we, we take my little daughter there in the spring and the summer. She absolutely loves it. So you've got the canoe safari at the top there where you can rent dugout canoes and you can go around this really brilliant uh, habitat. We've had grebes diving underneath the boat. Uh, there's dragonflies, there's nesting uh, coots, moorhens, there's all kinds of stuff. It's a brilliant thing to do. I think it's an upcharge for it. I think it's about five, I'm not quite sure. It's reasonable anyway. No booking allowed, you just turn up and it's a really brilliant thing to do. Well, for kids and adults, you know, I actually love going around by myself. You've got the pond zone as well where they do pond dipping. So they've got uh, pond dipping activities uh, during half terms and at the weekends. So have a look, we did it. it was absolutely brilliant. You have a real expert with you. They have all the kit there to help you identify everything. It's an amazing experience, uh, again, for children and big children alike. Um, Toad Hall and Cinema, uh, that's inside the main building. Uh, you can walk around, they've got a really fantastic collection of amphibians, uh, including the axolotls, they've got lots of different frogs. Uh, really, really amazing. They do uh, talks as well, I think it's twice a day in the cinema where they'll bring in uh, these species and you can have a look at them closely and an expert will tell you all about them. So again, fantastic for kids in there. Finally, got Welly Bootland there where the kids can literally run around and splash to their heart's content, get soaking wet, and it's a lot of fun. There's a little kiosk outside as well where you can get drinks. 
uh, and snacks and stuff like that. Um, kids really, really love it. And I've, I'm a big kid and I absolutely love it there. Um, there's lots of other like kid-friendly stuff to do all around the place, but I think they're the main kid-friendly things to do. And it's just awesome. Don't forget, there's a really brilliant restaurant there as well uh, that does all kinds of food. It's very sustainable. You know, you don't get plastic bottles of water. You get cans that are uh, recyclable there. Really, really excellent food. Uh, vegan offerings too. It's a really great restaurant. Just be aware that if you go between 12 and 12, 12 and 1.30, it's going to be very busy there, uh, but it's perfect early or late for a nice coffee, a bit of cake, sandwich, whatever. It's absolutely brilliant. I always go in there and they do the catering when we do our events there as well. Um, which reminds me, I must get an event there because I've done some for a while. Um, gift shop as well. I will just say a big shout out for the gift shop. Really cool. Lots of bird seed, lots of bird feeders, lots of bird books, lots of really, really cool stuff, right? Uh, just really cool stuff. So have a look in there. It's a real Adin's cave. I absolutely love it. Now, there's a couple of places I didn't mention in the film that I just want to highlight here because you may want to go and have a look. If you look at the top there, there's a place called tundra you kind of walk in and it's got a, a research hut from the arctic it's really really interesting but on the ponds to the right hand side you can get a lot of wild species and, and species in the collection uh, bathing and chilling out it's normally really beautiful still water and i've got some really fantastic stuff there particularly if you've got a blue sky overhead you get really beautiful watercolors you can get down low get some reeds in the foreground it can look quite cool so that's tundra um, now the other one is right at the bottom there, right at the bottom left, it's called Puddle Duck Corner. Now it used to be really fantastic for mandarins, but I think they moved them during bird flu or whatever. If they bring them back there, it's a really great place to get the mandarins in late light. It's kind of a funky light under the trees, very raking, it can look really, really good. So have a look. And then the other one I've run right in the middle is World Wetlands. Um, this is where the Hawaii Nene Center is. If you want to go and see the Nene's, that's where they are. Some of the most beautiful and friendly geese in the entire world. They're absolutely gorgeous. And you can go and see about the conservation work for them and also for other rare ducks in Madagascar. There's an amazing conservation story in there as well. So it's really brilliant just to go and look around those places. Of course, I've only covered a few places. There's loads of places in Slim, but that's the beauty of it. But I've just given you the main places to get you a kind of head start. Now, um, when I go to Slimbridge, you know, I've got my obsessions and I've got lots of obsessions. Uh, one of them at the moment is teal. Uh, I haven't managed to get the perfect teal shot and I keep going back and I keep going back and I'm going to get one. This is about the best I've got so far. Shows you what a beautiful bird it is. They're amazing in flight. I've just never managed to catch them in flight. And maybe I need to go in the mornings and do it. So it's always good to have a project that you're interested in, you're working on. And also, the northern pintail that you see here is something that I absolutely love. You get those from the InFocus hide, any one of those hides there on the, uh, just uh, uh, to the north of the visitor center. They'll fly across in flocks. There's a big number of them. Uh, they're really, really beautiful ducks. And remember the big tip, try not to get underneath. Try and get wings like that, the top of the wings, because that, that's the most beautiful. The underneath shows the feather structure, which often is not the most beautiful thing in the world. All right. That's it. Um, you know, Slimbridge, you can look up everything you need on their website. It's a really, really fantastic website. It's absolutely brilliant. You can look up everything there. Um, the pricing is quite reasonable, but please join them. It's a really great thing. I'll do some events there in the near future. It's an all round place and they have lots of other centers around the UK. I will do some blogs on them as well. Uh, blogs? Vlogs. I believe it's the trendy word is hashtag vlog. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, I'll do some on that as well, so you can have a look at them. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you've got any suggestions for places you'd like to see me do this for, then stick the uh, comments down below. As always, all the links that you need to know down below. Now, Wild Bunchers, uh, you hang on after this because you've got your bonus content where I'm going to look at some of my favorite images from Slimbridge and talk about the technical nature of how I shot them. Everyone else, thank you very, very much for your attention. Hope you enjoyed the video and go and show Slimbridge some love because you've still got some time this year to go and catch the Buicks and you will fall in love with them as much as I have. All right, all right for now. Bye bye.